Hi, everybody. Today's guest is Jerry McNeese. Jerry helps women say goodbye to traditional exercise and hello to fun. In 2009, she turned her passion for hula hooping into a business. Through her custom-made hoops and in-person person and online instructions for her long-distance clients, she allows you to experience the joy of youthful play, plus stay flexible, toned, and fit. She's the owner of Around Joy at the Hoop Shack in Arlington, Texas. Jerry, who is 61, primarily works with mature women, helping them find the true fountain of youth and a healthier life through hooping. Welcome to the show, Jerry. Well, thank you, Heike. It's so nice to have you here. Listen, (laughs) I just read, and you shared it all over social, but people that are not um, on social media and they're simply listening to this podcast or watch our video on YouTube, you just recently donated some of your hoops. Tell us how this came about, that you donated hoops. Well, um, thanks for thanks for bringing that up, like right top of the show here. Um, you know, I've been uh, teaching hoop dance and hoop fitness since 2009, and I started quite different than what what I do now, what people see now. I was only taught in person. Um, I'm here in Texas, uh, where we can do things outside pretty easy, most all year. Um, and I would do these bigger events and teach classes. I had a warehouse where I taught. It was called the Hoop Shack, actually. And um, that's how I started, was with bigger classes. And, of course, when you teach bigger classes, you need a set of hoops. And then those led to events uh, that more people would come. And we would do different themes. And we had different color hoops for the 4th of July and St. Patrick's Day and parades and Christmas time. And I mean, just an all year thing. And this went on for several years and I collected quite the collection of hoops um, so that I would have them for the group events or have them for the larger classes. Or when I got booked to do an expo and I needed to teach a big gym full of, you know, people um, and I would keep them in storage. Well, my husband and I, we are now in our sixties and we're kind of doing home remodeling, decided to stay where we're put and we want to declutter. Well, the storage unit kind of is dedicated to a lot of hoop shack stuff because I no longer have a warehouse and I no longer uh, need those big sets of hoops because I don't really do parades anymore. And why do I, why did I pull in? Because I'm 61. My energy level is not the same. Um, I've pivoted to the online space completely, um, except for possibly, you know, the private session where they come to my home, work with me one on one. I can do that by request. I have a beginner class. I have lessons online for local people, but it's not necessary because I have the course now that comes with the hoops. So in my infinite wisdom, I was like, gee, I I, I need to get rid of these. I'm going to minimalize my life a little bit because we really don't need them. And they are so powerful at helping women and especially young women. And I had this in my mind that over the years I've donated hoops uh, for different charity causes, one or two, you know, into silent auctions, um, sometimes a group of hoops. But I believe me, I have tons. So I even made a big donation when we closed the hoop shot uh, to like, you know, Salvation Army. I do believe that was the one that I did make uh, years ago. But yeah, I just thought I'm going to do that again. And I told my husband, I do not want to just make phone calls and find somebody. I'm hoping that someone will see the need. I need to do, I I said to myself, I need to do a video and tell people, nominate some agencies. I thought of that probably two, three months ago. Well, I said to him about two, two, three weeks ago, I said, you know, I need to start getting on this hoop donation thing. And would you believe it? Like the next week I got an email from some nonprofit in California whose girls were in need of hoops. They are in a residential program for um, foster girls 12 to 18 years old. And I read this beautiful email on a Facebook Live and I said I couldn't believe it. Here's a group of hoops already. I had them somewhat ready because I have a stash in my hoop workroom here. And I started with those because they looked the best and they were most of them twisted down. And that that email came. That was like a just... 
God just dropping that in my lap. So that's how that came to be. If you saw the video on the Instagram where I was putting them in the box. I'm sorry, I have a little bit of a cough drop. Um, you know, that it truly is from the video, other people joined in. There's an actual hoop instructor in California who lives very close to that actual agency. And there you go. She's going to donate some. She's going to actually physically get to work with them. But my hope is that I sent 12 hoops. Um, another lovely uh, organization donated money to, to cover the shipment that I first made. I'm going to take my own money and do another shipment with some bigger hoops. And uh, if I ever go out there to California, my son lives in Northern California. We're going to actually, my husband said, we should take some with us on a trip. Maybe if we do it later in the year. And then I'll get to meet the agency. I won't get to meet the girls, but I'll get to meet the people that I'm donating to. It. They're called Casa de Amparo, and they're in um, California. And I can't remember the name of the city, but in, in near San Diego. So what are they called? Casa de Amparo. Okay. Um, and they are, I want to say, I can't remember, but they're right outside, like Carlsbad maybe, or but near San Diego, enough to set Southern California. And we are very, very uh, knowledgeable in that area. My son lived there for many years and we used to travel there at least once every couple of years. So um, he lives in Northern now. So it's very possible we're going to do like a road trip and we can put the hoops in the car and take about, you know, maybe 10 more and then I'll get to meet them. So I'm excited. I think, isn't that a lovely story? And it's the, it is, I wanted everything they said in the email is what I envisioned. Like, you couldn't have written that better. It's amazing. So, yeah, when I heard about that, I thought that would be a great opening for our listeners to get a feel for who Jerry is and how generous she is. And oh, what thank hoping, you. Hoping means to her. Yes, and it, it is. It is important. It does mean that much. I couldn't just donate them to the Goodwill store. You know what I mean? Yeah, or something. Not that I don't do that, but you know what I mean? It's, it's too important to that love to get out there in the world to where it's needed. And the powerful changes and transformations and therapeutic benefits that those girls need, they asked for hooping. Their counselors saw that as a great request. They, the girls thought of it, though. So that's what's let's neat. Talk, let's talk about Jerry before hooping. So what was your <laughs> life like about before you started hooping? And what did you do for a living? Or um, and what well, was life like back then before hooping? Well... Um, believe it or not, I was a mom, you know, normal mom for many years because I have two sons. They are now 30, 30, 36, going to be 36 and 33 this in a few months. Right. Um, and they were challenging boys to raise. Um, the oldest has ADHD, uh, completely owns it now <laughs> and completely owned it then. But um, he was just a handful and I was a new mom with a boy and, you know, huh. and then I decided to have another one. Why? I don't know. I was working in banking at the time and we wanted one more son to complete our family or boy or girl. And it just so happened we had another boy and that was it. I knew I wouldn't have any more because that was two boys would be great, you know, enough. And um, I just, I, I did quit working, uh, and to stay at home with both of them because daycare would have been crazy. That was back in the you know late eighties. And I felt like I could do pretty good because I, I wanted to see if I could calm this older one down and nurture the new one and be the mom. And it was almost like playing a role, you know, trying, and I'm an actress by nature because I did that in, uh, all throughout my life, really dance and stage and all that. Um, and so I just, I don't know, for years, I kind of, I don't say I faked it, but I learned how to be a different kind of person because I really had always been a performer, um, studied that, like I said, in college, but knew I didn't want to make that a career. So when I came back into uh, the, the world as a you know 20 something year old and met a husband, I didn't do the performance part. So I was the mom for many years, right? And at that, mom of two kids with uh, learning disorders, we found out after Kevin was diagnosed that Kyle, my younger one, was autistic. So we had to, you know, just baptism by fire. We had a, a three-year-old and a six-year-old, basically. 
And one of them was in school and it was just learning all the things, how to deal with teachers, how to deal with therapy, how to deal, do we do medication? Do we not do medication? And all the things that go with that. Plus not a lot was known about either one of those disorders. You know, that was, it was, they were, they were pretty much, they weren't new, but they had been called different things. And um, minimal brain dysfunction was ADHD, which that sounds really bad, doesn't it? So when we first got him diagnosed, that was what they called it was minimal brain dysfunction slash ADHD. And we were like, what? And then autism was just Rain Man, you know, the movie. That's really all we knew. Mm -hmm. And I remember they told us our son, the, the younger one, you know, there, there are institutions as he gets older. That was what we were told. We were like, OK. And then I was just dealing with Kevin trying to put him on some dexedrine or methamphetamine pills, which was scary. Um, he did great, by the way. We did put him on medication. And, you know, that's doing the things that we did all came from our gut, all came from our heart. But as you can tell, just by me telling you that little bit, it was all consuming. So I didn't do anything for me. Like this girl you see here now today it was totally different. So um, when you were in your 20s, Jerry, so you mm -hmm. were an actress or you pursued an acting mm -hmm. career. What mm -hmm. else did you do? So in my 20s, pretty much that because I went to, um, I'm a product of parochial high, you know, 12 years of Catholic school and went off to college, which was the big world with real people, not just Catholic school, right? Mm -hmm. um, but I did pursue a musical theater degree. Um, didn't quite make it like I was three years in school. When my dad passed away, um, I kind of lost myself. Um, you know, I didn't want to stay here because my mother was left alone. And, and I found my dad when he passed the day he passed away. I was having to be home that day. So that was a real um, gift. I look back on it as a gift. And I write, I tell the whole story on my blog. So if anybody cares to read that. Um, losing both my parents before I was 25, basically. Um, my, my mother did not last after daddy died and I just couldn't see her. It was sad to me. And I had two older sisters. So I did the, I did the thing that the actress Jerry wanted to do. I moved to New York, but I only stayed there six months. I mean, it, I missed home too much. When you live in Texas all your life and you move to the big city, as much as I love New York city, I love New York. Let me just say that. I just not meant to live there. I don't think I could. And, and maybe now I could that I'm more, more grown up. But back at 20 something, um, 21, I would just, I needed my car. I needed my green space. I needed the sky. Uh, you know, being in the city is just different. It's exciting at first, but um, I moved back. You guys got together and started a family and had to overcome all these um, challenges with both of your sons. Yes. And, which you said they're fully grown, they're independent, they're doing their own thing. In mm -hmm. California. But how did you and your husband survive through that? I must have Ooh. been a very challenging time to well, it's, it that it, way. It, it was. We did a lot of therapy. I mean, we owned it from the day one. And the thing that I think you hear from a lot of couples, I'm really passionate about this, by the way. I don't talk enough about it, but I'm super, super um, grateful that we made it to the other side of that because there are times where we doubted we could, but therapy got us through it because we didn't, not just me and him, like my couples therapy, but family therapy, because our boys, we were lucky enough to live in a town, a city, a city, if you really are a city, um, where there was therapy for uh, kids like that. And, and I, I, I owe so much to that uh, particular agency that we worked with the therapist there, the summer camps that the kids went to, they were therapeutic. They hiked all day long. And you, more than anybody would understand, is that physical exercise that really helps the kids' brains function and get and moving and really setting those kids up for um, difficulty so that they can sit there and get angry and then process that feeling. And then we as parents would go to a parent component group for therapy and learn how to deal with those issues, like hearing the stories that the counselors are telling us what happened during the day. And after, every day when we picked them up at summer camp and it wasn't, you know, it was fun for them, but it was, there was an ulterior motive there. It was therapy and they, they knew it, but still they loved going because of the physical. Now the younger one didn't because he's autistic and he likes to stay inside and do his video games and all that. 
but that was pushing him out of his comfort zone. Whereas the older one, give him all the activity, give it to him, like make him do it. And he would just sleep like a baby. So, you know, it was like, it was just a win-win for, for many years. Um, and then we, we applied a lot of the parenting techniques that they, you know, would teach us. And we would sit in parent groups and feel really confident and good because so many parents were at odds and fight all the time about their children. And we, yes, we fought about it sometime, but ultimately we were on the same page. We'd have to kind of kick each other and go, no, 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 no. Let's talk about this, you know, and screaming matches were there. Yes. Lots of, lots of butting heads, especially with our older one. He ended up leaving the house at 17 to join the military. That was a travesty. He almost went AWOL. He hated having a drill instructor. We knew he would, but he wanted to go and he, was no, not a medication. He just wanted to do his own thing. And the 17 year was 16, 17 was really hard, really hard. And I actually quit working out of in banking because I, I kept that career going. Remember, I started as a teller and I kept my, my banking career going. But then I started staying home when Kevin, um, oh, I, well, I stayed home until elementary school because one of us was always home. That's the other thing. My husband had back surgeries and um, he had to change careers. Let's just say, if we'll put it like that. He had some really severe back problems. And because he went to college for about three years and he did really, really well and got a change careers, got a really good job. We were both like flipping. Like I stayed home for a while. Then when he had his surgery, he started going to college. I went back into the workforce part time doing just banking because that's all I knew. And then he was home with the boys. And then once, see that's that was another key thing as we kind of just dual parented really well um and then once the teenagers hit i said i can't work anymore i I love the money we have we can take these great vacations but that don't mean a hill of beans if you know they're running especially the older one was kind of running around on the side you know when mom and dad are too busy guess what happens right they get into the wrong crowd and all that so we, we, well, I stayed home then and he kept, you know, his career going and that's, you know, it, it took a, it took a lot of sacrifice, a lot of money. We went into debt with a lot of therapy, um, but it, we did what we had to do. I, I don't know how to put it, you know, and it wasn't easy, lots of fighting, yeah. but we always knew we had each other. And you know what, you did a very um, smart thing that when I got divorced, we basically co-parented as well, that Mm -hmm. when we went to school and the counselors would, you know, wanted to do this divorce counseling and all that, you would go in and they're like, well, we don't really know what to counsel them on. They seem so happy. And we're like, yeah, because we're really making sure that it's not like a separate household. We're doing everything together. We're just taking turns. Yep. What we're doing. And we're on the same page. We're not on different pages. We're not arguing. Yes, we do occasionally, but. Well, so often that's what happens. And also with kids with like ADHD and autism and other, you know, learning disorders, sometimes there's one parent that, that doesn't see it, that doesn't think it's a problem and the other one does. And so they really are in disagreement and we were never that way. In fact, I really feel like we were the only, the only set of parents in the group sometime, everybody else, the husband or the wife, you know, there was a little dissension between them on. I don't see if there was a problem. You know, she makes a big deal about it or, but no, Robert and I were always on the same page about that. Like we could see, yeah, oh yeah, our kids have some issues. <laughs> we were both in agreement. So, <laughs> so let's pivot into, uh, let's transition into hooping. Now I was blown away that you make your own hoops, but let's start from the get go. Okay. When did you start being interested in hooping, making your own hoops, and how did it all start? Okay. Um, Like I said, I was not working. I'd stopped working in like um, 2002 uh, because of, you know, my son, my older son, and then my younger son was very active. He's he's really a, you know, autistic, high-functioning autistic, okay? So he was really good in music. That was his gift, and he was in band, and uh, we were band parents. So we were always present, you know, doing the whole booster club stuff. So I wasn't working, so I had time to do that. And I really enjoyed seeing um, 
the flags moving on the band field, you know, and the rifle spinning because I was a baton twirler. That's something I didn't tell you. Um, so go, yeah. So going back to the band days, I was in a smaller school, obviously, and I was a majorette for a couple of years, but I really liked seeing that part of, of high school again. And it reminded me how happy that made me. And so I wasn't, it wasn't that I was looking for anything, but I was starting to feel like I've got extra time. I need to take some kind of dance class. Or do they make baton classes for older women now? You know, and I I remember I ordered a baton probably in 2002 just to fetch around with it in the backyard. And and I was kind of thinking it would be good exercise. I wanted to kind of go to aerobics classes. I've never been a weightlifter kind of person. Um, I didn't do Pilates because those classes looked really difficult. And I, I hadn't seen a lot of Pilates at that point. There were special studios and stuff, but I wasn't into that. Um, but I knew I needed to do some movement and I thought, well, why don't I just get back into some of these tap dance, some baton twirling. And that was in my mind. Okay. And I was kind of investigating. Well, we, one day, okay. Um, I was looking at television and I turned on good morning America and there was this lady with a hula hoop and they were demonstrating some new form of fitness. And I was just like, what? And I saw her doing it above her head, like just spinning it and dancing like this. And I was like, oh. I've got to try that. What is that? And this was back in 2007. And we didn't have like, you know, recording, TiVo, whatever that, we didn't have that. It was just like, if you, it's gone, you miss it. And so I was just like, what did I just see? Good Morning America. And at that point, we did have computer and websites. And I went to the Good Morning America website. And I, I ultimately, the page loaded to where, you know, there was a story about it. Because all I saw was that it was coming up, this, this, hoop thing. And I was just like, okay, well, where's the story? And it, you know, finally a couple hours later, it was loaded because there was no Facebook that I could go check or whatever. So um, I saw that this place existed um, where you could go take a lesson or you could order a hoop online from this company. And I was like, okay, well, I'm going to do that. I went to their website and I ordered the hoop. I was just like, I'm going to order it because it was that I didn't even think twice. Heike, I just was like, that is me. It, it spins. And isn't it? And she had a rocking body. I was just like, okay, it's got to be good for the body. You know, her arms looked long and she looked like a dancer. And I was like, okay, I ordered the poop. And then I realized we had a trip planned. And back then it wasn't none of this Amazon Prime stuff or you didn't know when things were coming. Sometimes it took a week or two weeks or whatever. And I didn't know how long it would take. So I thought, well, I got to find their phone number. We have a trip and we're going to California. And I don't know if my neighbor could get the box. Was who going to come this big? Like, what is it going to be? Come to find out, we had this trip to California planned. And I realized when I'm looking at their website, they were just like 15 minutes away from where we were going to be. I know. So I called them and that girl that was on the TV answered the phone and <laughs> just like, hello, you're, oh, okay. So, you know, it was a small company, but I explained the situation that I, I really, I, I, can you hold it? Don't send my hoop yet. Cause we're coming out there. And she goes, sure. Why don't you just do this? I'll, I'll send it to you after you either get back. But I said, as a matter of fact, I'm going to email you because I might want to take a lesson or class. <laughs> she goes, well, I only do the private lessons. I was like, Okay, well, let me think about it, but I'll email you. And I mean, it didn't take very long. I emailed her, booked the lesson, did not tell my husband because I thought he, I knew he'd say I was crazy, but I thought, well, this is something I can go do. They can go do something. My son and my husband can go do something and I can do this. And we had gone. So we, so I was excited. Like I had to keep it in. I couldn't tell anybody about it. Like not even my, one of my best friends at the time. I didn't tell her until I was there. I, cause I just didn't want anybody to talk me out of it or I didn't want anybody to make me feel like I'm doing something silly. I just knew it was like something I really wanted to do. So it was my little secret for like two weeks, three weeks. When we got to California, we went, to, we went there to see this big, um, drum and bugle corps competition, which had beautiful, you know, flag cores on the field. And it was at the Rose Bowl. And I, the whole time I was just thinking about how. I could be spinning a hoop on that field right there. Those cores need to have hoops. I'm thinking this while, I haven't even taken a hoop lesson yet, but I could see 
the circular motion in the way they do their flags and things on the field. I was excited and I thought, I'm really going to like this. So we go back to the hotel and I sat, I'll never forget it. I sat my husband and son down on the beds, you know, in the hotel room. And I went, okay, y'all, I've got something to tell you. I have something I want to go do. It's tomorrow. It's my souvenir for this entire trip. Y'all can go do whatever you want, but it's this hula hoop lesson. And my son was just like, what? And my husband was like, are you kidding me? What? And I had to show him the website and he saw this pretty girl, you know, they're on the, they're on the rocks on the beach, like, you know, up in the, and they're, they've got hardly, you know, their little skimpy clothes on, but they're doing their hoops. And he's just like, is your body going to look like that when you come out of there? And I went, maybe. Yeah. So anyway, he did take me, they took me and they went down to, they went to Venice beach and walked around and did some stuff while, and I was in, it was in Venice beach area. I was just so nervous, but the minute she came down the stairs and I saw her body for real, it was everything you saw on the TV and more. She looked fabulous. I was like, I'm your, I'm your clay mold me, you know? And so she, she laughed at me because I said, this is so familiar to me, but not because I never hula hooped as a kid. I was always busy with batons and dance. So I've got that low movement that I know it's in my, my soul. I'm drawn to this. And she goes, it's perfect. That's why you're drawn to it. It's in your soul. And I went, yes. She goes, well, well, here, come on, babe. And she just started showing me things. And I was just like, could not waste hoop to save my life. That like what you did, what I've seen you do with your new hoop. I couldn't do that. Like I was just a failure, but she gave me the off body stuff. And I was just like loving it. And she goes, all you need to do is go home and practice your on body mood and enjoy what you can do. And she got right up to me and she put her finger on my head and she said, this is going to be your biggest enemy that says I can't do it. Okay. I told my girlfriend about it and she thought it was nuts. And I said, you need to do this with me because you feel lonely. You want somebody to do it with. And I had to use a little reverse psychology on her and she wanted to lose weight and we did walk together, but I told her, let's walk at six in the morning. I knew she would hate it. And she did. And I said, you know what? I could come to your house with a hoop and we could practice this and we wouldn't have to get up at six in the morning. It's a lot of exercise, girl. You'd like it. She goes, I used to do it as a kid, but there ain't no way you can get me doing it. And I went, try me. Let's see. Because I feel confident that you could get this because I eventually got it. It's just a series of, of practicing and not setting yourself up like saying you can't do it. And I taught her. I could actually teach her how to do it with the, and, and it with a hoop that's even smaller than some of the ones I make now. And she's not a small girl. So I knew she had it in her and she and she did do it as a young child. So it kind of came back to her. But yeah, that's how I did it is I I just went with my gut that I wanted to do that. As scary as it was, but you I did got it. Your hoop. Mm -hmm. You got your hoop mm -hmm. and you started hooping and you didn't know anything about what you, when I, if the listeners don't know that I purchased a hoop from Jerry and she asked me all these questions when I bought the hoop because it's my 60th birthday in a few weeks, almost got And I said, for my 60th birthday, I want to learn how to hula hoop. Right. And I said, I've never done it before, but I have to correct myself because my mom saw my video. I took a little video because I wanted to show off oh, the no. one uh -huh. I had learned without the hoop. So I could impress her air quotes. And you did great. <laughs> and so great. I said it to my mom and she was like, you love to hula hoop. I'm like, when was that? Really? You don't remember, do you? I don't have no recollections. She's like, but we're about six years old and you were all about hula hoop. I'm telling was, you. I was Isn't that like, funny? Somewhere in there, my husband, like your husband was like, you got what? And especially when we put it together and we'll talk about next, how you make your own hula hoops, but it comes in bits and pieces and you clip them to click them together. And it makes this ginormous hoop where you're thinking, holy smokes. And if they watch the video, you see one of the pieces she's holding in her hand. And you're thinking, I do what a big thing like this. But that's exactly, and we'll talk about this in a, in a little while, what you need when you start out. So I'm hooping, ladies. So I will keep you. And you look good, too. I will you keep you good. 
posted all my progress. I mean, I look nothing like Jerry, but she's the expert and she's been hoping for what, 11 years? Yeah, start. Okay. I started in 2007, but I will say I stopped for several months because life got in the way. And I'm one of those that like my clients now, I got a hoop, was excited at first, did it for a while, taught my friend for a little bit, but then we got busy and we didn't do it. So I'm, I'm guilty of not doing it for almost, I'd say about nine months. Wow. And then, and then I got pushed into doing it again. And that's how I decided I was going to teach it. That when that, when she pushed the envelope. Yeah. That's, you became a teacher trainer though. You're not just, I did. It. You became a teacher trainer to other hoop, which actually the hula hoop now is all cool called hoop training. So hoop it's, training. Yeah. Right. <laughs> hoop training. But that's, yeah, that's ultimately what I did is I got so, I, my, and even my husband kind of pushed me a little bit after I kind of owned that I was going to do it. I said, I wanted to do it. Um, but I didn't express it out loud to too many people. And the first time I did it, we were the whole, there's a whole another story here, but, but I just uh, claimed what I wanted to do based on a lot. It was a lot of it had to do with the fact that it was that year of, of study, I think with uh, just watching Oprah, she was fixing to retire in a couple of years. And I remember there was a lot of talk about, you know, your best life and all that stuff. And that's when I, I said, you know, I, isn't it funny? I found the hoop about this time where I'm trying to rediscover myself. And I just, I, I really think that I found it for a reason. I think I, other women need to know about this. And so when I said that I wanted to teach it, he was surprised, but he said, if you're going to be spending this much money buying new hoops and trying different sizes, he goes, yeah, make it a business. And I'm like, okay, that's what I'm going to do. But I don't think he ever expected it to do, you know, to go on this long or to do the way I did it. Like I didn't, I didn't plan on opening a warehouse to teach it in. It was kind of going to be, I'm going to go to people's studios and you know, from teaching in health and wellness, it's hard to rent space. It's hard to find places to teach. And I had a real hard time at first. Um, yoga studios were very open to it, but not gym. And there's a reason why it's not in the gyms. It's, you can't just learn this and go to town and have an aerobics class. You just can't because you need to have the right size. You need some instruction. Not everybody knows how to spin a hoop. And, you know, that's, let's go ahead. Go back. Let's go. So mm -hmm. you became a teacher trainer. How long did you teach other teachers? Probably about a year. Probably. Um, because I, once I got certified from this company, then they, they, I, they did so, they really loved it the way I taught. And uh, we had to submit, I did distance training. I did not go to any particular place to get certified because she came to Texas wanting me to, the lady that I had taken the, my, men, my, my original mentor, but I wasn't ready at that point. That was about a year after I took my lesson. And I told her, I said, if you come out with a home program, let me know. And she goes, we actually are in the process of it. So you'll be on the list. And it was about a month later, she pinged me and said, it's ready for purchase. Here it is. Do you still want to do it? And I'm like, yes. So that was, that's what spurred me into like, I, then I suddenly was committed. I spent the money and my girlfriend was the one I stayed accountable towards. And I had to make a video that was back when you had, you know, not this, it was like camera stuff, but you had to teach all the moves backwards and forwards, like reverse direction. And I mean, and teach like you're teaching, like I'm talking to you right now. And they said, I was really good at that. Like you really explain it well. Um, we want you to train for us. And they were going to send me to cities. And I opted not to do that. I said, I'd rather do trainings here local. So people would come to me. Um, and so I taught several, several training classes, like for, and, and I met women that went on to get certified and teach, you know, they were, some of them were local, some of them were, had to drive, you know, 500 miles or whatever, but we kind of did them at my warehouse because I was already open at that point, um, with that hoop shack. So on my weekdays, I was teaching class and the weekends I would be doing a training thing where we would do a two day training inside the warehouse. Yeah, that's how I did it. So you design your own hoops, which I find super fascinating. So tell us about the process, how you came up to actually take a big hoop because ladies yeah. are huge to break it down into pieces, that idea, and that they lock really well together. At first, yeah. they're numbered. So for anybody who is backwards like I am, they're numbered. <laughs> yeah. really you got little numbers on the inside. Yeah. It's made by hand, obviously. Um, you're going to see that there are segmented hoops out there that you can buy on the internet in different, you know, form stores on, you know, whatever shopping mode you want to get. You can find a quote fitness weighted hoop and they will break down because that's how they send them to you. 
the the thing about that particular hoop is that it's too heavy. Okay. Weighted hoops have a reason. There's a great blog post on my website um, where I weigh in on weighted hoops and um, it's meant for one thing. It's meant for putting it on your waist and standing there and hooping, like just doing one motion constant and it's weighted. Okay. So it could be three pounds, four pounds, five pounds. Sometimes I've seen even eight pounds. That's very damaging to your insides. Number one, but number two, it can only be done for a certain amount of time because it they do, they have a disclaimer on it. I wanted my hoop to be able to be gentle on the body and big enough for success without being too heavy. Now, what do you mean by that? Well, it's simple physics, okay, that something in motion will stay in motion, especially if it's um, you give them the momentum. If it's heavier, there's more to go around and it's going to hold that that motion okay it will that's what the weight does on a hoop it's similar to where i don't know if you've ever seen they put water inside little toy hoops for that very reason it's kind of displaces it adds some weight and the little kids can get it sometime easier that's why there's water in those hoops at the walmart or whatever so if you took the water out and that hoop was really tiny which a lot of times you might pick one up and there's nothing in it it's very light it's like a little toy with nothing in it too small maybe 24 36 30 inches whatever you can't do that as a grown adult. It's too little. It'll spin too fast. It'll, there's no weight to it at all. You can't even, if you touch it, it's going to fly away. There's nothing to push against. It drops to the floor, right? You try over and over. You're defeated. You don't know what the problem is. That's too small and light, okay? Then you've got the opposite end where it's way too heavy. It's a little bigger, but not big enough. Now, take, the, take weight away, but make the hoop itself larger, the actual space larger, Okay, then you'll have room to get that important motion in that keeps the hoop going, which is the backward and forward or the side to side, right, that I teach in my waist hooping section of the course, right? So you're, there's a method to that that you have to get into your body. And that particular hoop that I make serves that purpose, okay, so that you're allowed to do that. Now, why, why did I start making the segmented hoop? Okay, so I started originally selling one that was made who knows where not in America and not made with well good plastic and it was bigger not big as what I make and it clicked apart but the connections were not that great they were made by a machine and plastic okay not made like I make they would crack and then you would be you couldn't repair it and then you'd be down a segment right um, you try to get replacement parts, didn't work. The hoops just, I was reselling at wholesale, you know, I'd buy them and I was getting returns. It was just no good. I was like, okay, I can't sell this hoop anymore. I'm gonna start making my own. And I was really only selling local. I didn't have a website yet that sold hoops. So I made them big size, whatever I felt a, a person needed. And you know this, I ask you those questions. How old are you? How, what's your size? What kind of experience do you have? Are you sedentary? Are you very active? And all those things play into the size of the hoop. But we want that hoop bigger so that we have success, right? It's always made out of the same kind of pipe, which is irrigation pipe. And I put tape on it, but I would make them two size. There was no segment, right? Which left a problem of then a woman had a big enough one so she could try and work on her waist taping, but then she didn't have a small one to practice the all important, you know, upper body stuff with your you hands and arms. video you see Jerry waving around one of the pieces around above her head. So go, you gotta go watch the video, ladies. <laughs> but you know, that motion of circling the hoop above my head, that's an important skill that you'll learn that all beginners need to know how to pass a hoop around the body, okay? Or behind their head, pass that hoop. You know, that was too big to do that. So then I would sell them a second hoop or sometimes. And I hated that because it felt like I'm just trying to get them to buy extra hoops. So something told me, you know, there is a, a, a way to segment a hoop. I just need to investigate what are the right tools that I need to buy? What are the neat components that I need to look at? And I looked online and it's like anything else, Heike, you just, you just get scrappy and you watch everything you can on the internet, you know, and you, you order a couple of hoops from different hoop crafters because it's like anything else. Uh, there's, I'm not the only one doing this, right? So I'm looking at different components I can buy. And I have a husband who is like, Tim, the tool man, Taylor, like Mr. Fix it. And he's got all the tools in the world and he can show me how to use them. So he bought me a, a new drill press so that I could drill, you know, the holes correctly, 
have a vice. I mean, you know, I don't just sit there and do everything by hand. I have like, I have a workshop bench kind of like where I construct this stuff. And I had to research where to buy the least expensive components and all that stuff. But I prototyped several and I have different, you can see, these are, these are all just prototypes of different sizes. And, you know, did I want this clip to go here? It was about, you know, a six month process. And then I just started making them and realized because of 9-11 and the way that we can't travel with hoops that easy anymore on a plane, something like this, you know, affordably could be, you know, into our bag easier. So for, the, for the listeners, this means it's about how, how long is one piece, Jerry? Um, they vary, but a segment on your hoop, okay, could be anywhere from like 16. And I'm saying with include this about 18 to 19 inches. So for the in, listeners who don't see the video, you know about how long it is. I would say like the, the, the length of my forearm and my hand is about the way. Yeah. I see think. how it's right. And you've got a set of nine of these and you don't have to take all nine with you. When you travel, you can go down, two of them can come out. So you have seven segments for the full size or for the smallest, but I'd say eight, eight segments is what you typically would use. Cause that's an average size hoop. The bigger nine segments going to give you a really big hoop that anybody could really use. So if you were going on a trip where let's say like I've done a cruise and you wanted to be like the girl that lets other people try your hoop, you need to have all nine segments. You know what I mean? So it travels easier. Not only that, but it mails a lot easier. You may have seen the video where I twist down the hoops and put them in the box for the girls. We talked about that earlier. I used to sell that kind only. OK, and there was a trouble with that, because now when you mail something this big round, if it gets to be over 24 inches in diameter, then you're, you're up, up in your charge another 20 bucks for shipping. I mean, it's crazy because it's not a square box. Right. And even if you do a square box, 24, 25, that gets more costly than what it costs to send something like this in a little. You saw your package. So it's really slim right, line. For the people that don't see the video, so we have these bits and pieces of like an arm length with a hand length, bits that all click together. And it's very mm -hmm. solid. At first, I was uh, wondering how solid they are because you start twirling them around your, your waist, like, like Jerry calls waist hooping. But they're very solid and you can pick your own colors to get it decorated. But that's a different right. story. But one thing I really was impressed by, the craftsmanship, how solid Thank you. they were. Thank you. And uh, how well they clicked together and how light they were. Like you said, for mm -hmm. traveling, it was perfect because I live here in Maryland and Jerry sent me the hoops from Texas and the little package arrived, a little envelope almost. I was like, this is my hoop. And then it was crazy. I was like, yeah, this is my hoop. And it turned out to be a huge hoop. So let's get into you're making your own hoops. We're talking to women over 50. Is it safe for women over 50 mm -hmm. to start hooping? What are the benefits and how can they start doing okay. safely? Yeah, this is why I do what I do. This is you're getting into the passionate part for me. Um, it is it is like golf, okay, for how men can do it till their 80s, whatever. That is exactly what hooping is. And you wouldn't ever know it because you see so much the wrong information um, when we see like hoop videos and they younger girls than us are spinning hoops that are probably smaller, little colorful tubes. And they're bending over with their leg in the air and it's spinning on their foot and they putting it, putting it on their bun on their head and they're putting it on their neck and all this. And that's what a lot of times and crazy tricks, you know, they're on the elbows and they're doing all the things and that's fun to look at. But if you as a 50 something year old woman who's got some arthritis pain, you see that you're like, that ain't for me. And that is why I do what I do, because I'm like, yes, it is. That's not the style we do. You don't start doing stuff like that. I could do a little of that because I started hooping so long ago. I moved, I learned a lot of tricks. Tricks are fun. But now at 61, I just like moving gently with my hoop. And so that's why I teach the way I do, because I think more women just need to understand it's so forgiving. Um, anybody can start wherever they're at and do something. I think you might kind of get a feeling for that now that you have a hoop, you can see, oh, I can take this size, you know, like maybe take a segment out and you can just hold it and do those stretches every day, right? You're not spinning it on your waist. 
You're not even, you don't have to learn that if you don't want to. It's a partner, it's a tool. Now, certainly, I hope you try waste hooping and I hope you use all nine segments and give it a go. I give you the instruction how to learn that. That's your little, little bit of cardio practice for the day. Now let's talk about moving the upper body. Let's talk about opening up the, the upper back and the chest. Look through the warm up and stretch. Just do that. That's your hoop practice. Hooping is very personal and it is whatever you want to do with that hoop that feels good for your body. So everybody comes at a different space to it. Some women have really bad knees. And maybe they shouldn't be overdoing that waist hooping. So you know what? But you should walk, right? The doctor's telling you, you need to walk more. You need to lose weight. You need to walk. Walk with your hoop in your hand and hold your hoop and do some of those movements. I tell you, all the off-body things, passing a hoop and walking at the same time. Don't be embarrassed. Do it in your backyard. Do it in your front yard. Go down the street with your hoop. That's, you know, it's that kind of movement. It's almost like, it's functional. You know what I mean? It's functional exercise. It's not over the top. It will, it will um, loosen up your joint. I mean, juice up your joints, keep them, keep yourself not only flexible in the muscle, but the joints. How often are we forgetting the joints, right? This is what dynamic stretching, like no other, like constant movement. you you hit all your body parts. And I talk about this in the course. That's what is so functionally needed for us at this age. So rather than do something that you don't like, like have to hit the gym and do all the circuits and do all the things, that's not me. I don't diss people that do that. That's just not my bag. So I found what is. It's very Pilates-like, but in a whole different modality, if that makes sense. Some of the same Pilates benefits are right there with your hoop. You could take your, your segments out and make it a little bit smaller and do some of your Pilates kind of stretching kind of things and you know exactly what I'm talking about. So you've got a hoop that breaks down into a couple of other sizes, okay? So that you can functionally use it for different things. And that's another benefit people don't know about. You feel younger, like instantly. You touch it and you're like brought back to just the kid. Even if you never hooped before, it's just something to play with. It's just, you know, it's, it's, it's a fidget spinner, but a lot bigger, you know what I mean? It just gives you a purpose for your hands, it is something that you can go fiddle with when you're getting a snack attack. Maybe just drink a bunch of water. You're really not hungry. You just need to, you just need to hydrate. But then you go outside and mess with it for you know two three minutes, and you're taken away, and that and that turns into five or ten. And if you do that five or ten times a day, or two two three times, that adds up to thirty minutes of movement that you may not have gotten. So it's a, it's it's like a little pastime hobby that has the perk of being physical exercise. Do you know what I mean? Um, and when you do it, this is the other thing, you build your confidence. And that confidence transfers into other areas of your life. People don't realize that it will, but it does. I've seen it time and time again. I see women that are shy. There's a social aspect to it. Even though we don't have big communities doing it anymore because of, you know, I've pivoted and we're online, COVID, whatever. Um, I see women start this that are typically shy, but they're doing it by themselves at home. And then pretty, pretty soon they're like, y'all look what I'm doing. And then they might like show a little video or they'll show their, their friend in person. And then it's like, then they start, Oh, people like it. Oh, well, let me do a little bit more. And then they suddenly have self-confidence and they're not as shy anymore. They start wearing colorful clothes. They didn't wear color before, but now they're, they like their colorful hoop. And you know, that doesn't happen always, because certainly if you're not a colorful person, but you want a hoop, you get a hoop that's not so colorful. You know, you can get different kinds of color of tape on it and you can be very subdued with your hooping. But I have seen it make women come out of their shell, so to speak. I mean, for many, many times. That's a, that is a beautiful metamorphosis right there. And, and really just the, the mental benefits at this age in our life where we've lost, we feel like we've lost so much, you know, be it physically estrogen, be it children have gone to college, be it, you know, careers. Um, it's like, what, how do I rediscover who I really am? That's exactly what happened to me. I just really wanted to find myself again. And that's what happens is, is that feeling the mental drain that we have at this age. Number one, because of menopause, you just are so fuzzy headed and 
you just got so many random thoughts, you can't sleep at night, you, you know, all the things that, that are making our minds race. Pooping allows you to slow down and listen to your brain is telling your hand to do this while thinking of this path. And, you know, it's just all putting all that together is like a crossword puzzle with movement. And it's so good for our brains at this age. We need to keep learning and really using the brain. And people don't realize how much hooping does that until they start and realize I have got, it's like chewing gum, patting your stomach and doing all this. At the, you know what I mean? And, it, and a lot of people feel frustrated because they don't get it like that. Like they see me doing something and then they go outside and they're like, I just can't get it. Well, I never like that word. I never, don't ever say can't. I'm working on it. That's how you say I'm working on it. But when you try and try and try, little things happen. It has to cook. And that is so good for our brains at this age. You know what I'm talking about. So that's the, that's one of the biggest reasons I'm going to keep doing it. Even though I'm not learning a lot of new I think to run my business, I have to learn a lot of new constantly. And I have to learn how to, you know, speak to different women all the time and have to do this Zoom and how to do this, you know, uh, new clubhouse and how to do, you know, I'm always in the process of learning anyway. So I know that's what's going to keep me in business. But for me to be teaching, coaching online, these women, it, it, I'm doing it for our mental health uh, as much as physical, seriously. And I think that hooping translates, I mean, I'm in the same niche. My background is different. But when I think of what I coach the women in our age group, it is not so much about hardcore things, but the mental part and the confidence and the feeling good about yourself part. Yes. And one of the things that I had thought about the hooping for a long time, I, I, um, used to have a client who is younger, she's in her 40s, and she's a hooper. Mm -hmm. and I was like, what are you doing? And she's like, well, I got hula hoops. I'm like, go, go bring them so I can see them. And that was way, way before COVID. And so she brought her hoops and she always looked so sexy and fluid and had so yep. much fun and the music was playing because I know so many women who love to dance and don't get to dance anymore. And the music is on, and when the when the hoop is there, I'm like, I got my dance partner. <laughs> it is your hoop is that's the thing, and I don't go into that a lot sometimes because I don't want women to think they have to be dancers to do this because they don't. Yeah. Um, you know, when you are with your hoop, that is you and your little dance partner, and it's your own personal party. And that's why I don't believe in choreography. I know there are some women that hoop that like to learn that way, that like to learn a series of steps to put together just and I know you're a dancer too as far as your uh, ballroom dance right uh Argentine tango and salsa. Argentine tango mm, and salsa you can get in your hoop and just kind of move like that right I don't believe in putting steps together though I just believe in moving what feels good and so if you learn like four or five different you know hoop things that you can kind of put together which is basically what I teach those foundational things if you just follow the course you'll be able to figure figure your own flow out. We call it flow. I don't want flow to be a set pattern. There's some people that say, we're going to put a hoop, a hoop flow together. The first move is this. The second move is this. Da, 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 da. And that's not flow. We want to get caught in that state of flow where it just feels good and things just meld and you just keep repeating it, but it don't matter because it looks new and fresh. To, and you don't even, don't do it for the observer. That's one, another thing I have trouble um, watching people constantly put videos of themselves out hooping because you're doing it for the observer and not yourself. Does that make sense? Too much outer approval and comparison. And then that's the thief of joy. We don't want comparison to get in here. So I try to create that community where we're just celebrating each other. We can, you know, if you post a, in my inner circle, if you post a video, I you know, love it. I hope you do. But if you don't, that's cool too. But I, it's, we're not doing it for critique. We're not doing it for anything other than I want to encourage others to do the same and move like me, like with us, not like me, do it your own, own way. But I, I don't like to uh, put choreography together. That's one thing I've never done with the exception of a couple of performances that we did at basketball games years ago when I had my, you know, my hoop shack, but 
Flow yeah. is a big thing. I will- it really <laughs> sounded almost like final words of what you just said a minute ago to send women off with their hoop into happiness and joyfulness in their life. And that's exactly what, that's exactly what I'm going to keep doing this for. So I could just keep throwing that, that hoop out there for anyone that's looking for that kind of joy back in their life, because it's, it's truly what happens. You have to allow that. You can't be scared of what people will think because that will dampen your joy. You know? So, Jerry, final question. Where can people reach you and connect with they, you? They can connect with me on most social media, um, just around joy, all one word, A-R-O-U-N-D-J-O-Y. I'm on Instagram. I'm on primarily Facebook. I have a nice Facebook community there. I have a, um, let's see, group on Facebook, Start Hooping Over 50 with Around Joy. And that is just an informative group where I – post some of my very best um, live videos. I love to do live videos. I've been doing them for about four years on Facebook now. Lots of information, free information for sure. I'm talking about all the benefits of hooping over 50. Now, um, I am, like I said, Instagram. I'm YouTube, not as active, but I do have a YouTube channel with lots of, lots of cool videos from the past, for sure. I need to repurpose. I have a blog on aroundjoy.com. So uh, that is my website too, aroundjoy.com. And um, just getting started on Clubhouse. I really like it. Um, it's, it. It can be a big time suck, but I'm, <laughs> I'm starting to learn a lot. And so hopefully I'll be um, co-moder- co-moder- can I say that? co-moderating uh, a room or two. And then hopefully I'll have a club there someday, you know, where we can talk more about movement and fun, joyful movement. I think that'll be a fun club to, to do. So, but around joy, it's easy to find pretty much Perfect. everywhere. So listen, guys, now you know how to find Jerry and all of all the things about around joy and, <laughs> and find out more about w- what she did before and how you can potentially uh, move forward in your own hooping life. And, I want to say thank you to Jerry for being here and sharing all that wisdom about something that I know very little about. And I've just became uh, it reintroduced as I found out. And uh, I know how much fun it is. And if you want to reach out to us, you have the handle for Jerry and all the links will be in the show notes. So it's easy for you to click on the link and get to either one of us. But what I'd like you to do is reach out to us on Instagram and let us know what you thought about the episode. If you want to get a hoop, if you've been hooping before. So anything or any questions you may have that we didn't answer in today's interview, and we'll get back to you, especially Jerry will get back to you through the Pursue Your Spark podcast. But you can find us anywhere on social media and you know how to find me at hikinggates.com. And with that, we are out of here. Thank you so much, Jerry, for being here. Oh, thanks. It was great. Heike, I loved this. Awesome. And I'll see you guys next time on the Pursue Your Spark podcast. Ciao.